So about a week ago, my wife came to me and uh, she said she was on Pinterest and she saw a picture of this. So she liked it, but she said there wasn't a whole lot of instruction on how to actually complete this project. So she wasn't sure if I'd be able to do it. Well, I was able to duplicate it um, fairly easily. And uh, I was thinking though, as I was doing it, I thought, you know, I should have videoed this and then I could have thrown it out there for other people that may have the same issue, may want this, but don't know exactly the full process to making it. So fortunately, unfortunately, however you want to look at it, um, when I got done, I took it to my wife and gave it to her and she said, oh, it's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted, but I thought it would be a lot bigger. So I'm back in the shop now and I'm going to be doing this thing all over again. Um, but of course, I'm going to make a much larger pumpkin this time, and now I can do the video. Okay, this is step one, and step one is just to create our pumpkin pattern that we're going to use to transfer onto the pallet wood later on. So I've got a little piece of quarter-inch plywood here, uh, but you can use whatever you want. If it's easier to work with cardboard or construction paper, whatever you want, just something that's going to be sturdy enough to allow you to recreate that pattern. Um, I'm also going to freehand my pumpkin, but you can use a projector to put an image on the screen and trace it if you want, or maybe you already have a pattern in mind, you can just use that to transfer on. But um, I'm just gonna freehand mine real quick. And what I'm doing is I'm actually only doing half of the pumpkin, okay? So as I only do half, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my jigsaw and I'm gonna cut this half out and then all of this scrap that I have, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it over onto this side and then I'm going to retrace this half, this scrap, and that was going to give me a symmetrical pumpkin. So if I just tried to freehand it, I would probably end up a little bit off and it would show up. So I, I use this method just to give me a more symmetrical pumpkin. Okay, I got my pumpkin traced. This is going to be my pattern now for the rest of the project. So what I'm going to do is go grab some pallet wood lay it out, and then put my uh, pumpkin on top and trace that pattern, so. You can see this is a pretty wide piece. Um, typically the base pieces, the outer ends of your pallets are a little bit wider and then the center slats are a little narrower. So I, when I'm making the top portion of this, I like to use the wider slats if, I, if you have them, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so I've got these all laid out. I'm going to make sure it's wide enough to fit my pumpkin, and it is. It's going to be just right. I'm going to center it at the, on the edges and then at the bottom as well. It's pretty good right there. I'm about equal distance to each side, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it. got a pretty good trace line here. All I need to do now is go back to my bandsaw or a jigsaw if that's what you have and just cut them out. And all you have to do is cut one slat at a time. I'm just going to follow my line right here on this one, cut it, lay it down, get my next one, cut down here, cut here. You can see I'm going to lose that whole piece. So I'm just going to have a little piece right here, a little piece up the top. No problem. Okay. My cuts are done, didn't take very long, pretty easy, got a nice sharp blade on the jigsaw and I was very careful um, when I was actually cutting it out because I know that the interior of this is going to create a whole nother pumpkin that I'm going to be using in another uh, project. So you can see now I have this pumpkin here that I'm going to remove and I'm going to set aside and I'll end up using that for another project I'll probably show you later on, but for now we're going to continue with this one. So, gonna... so I have the horizontal slats now, and I'm just going to kind of lay these out right on top. I just want to make sure I have enough. Um, use very unique wood. You know, we're going to paint it a little bit, but we already want to see there's a lot of character in this wood, so I want a lot of that. 
to kind of come through even uh, after it's painted. Um, different thicknesses. So, looks like that's going to be just right. So now that I know I have enough horizontal slats to fill up the inside of that pumpkin, I'm going to uh, just mark these underneath and then cut them to length and then I'll go inside and paint them. Okay, I actually have laid all the slats out and I took the cutout and laid it on top of it and then just kind of very light pencil mark traced the pumpkin again onto these slats just so I have an idea of what I'm doing as I paint it. So up here is the stem and I'm gonna do uh, just a brown, you can do green if you want, but I'm just gonna do kind of a dark brown with it. And remember this is the whole point of this is kind of distressed, rugged. Nice baby. What are you doing? I'm going to overlap a little bit on the board below because the stem actually um, overlaps as well. So the whole top of the pumpkin is going to have kind of a little bit of a brown to it. This board is already pretty unique as it is, so what I'm going to do is just take a, an orange and just kind of just barely brush it on over the top of it. And then there's some of these areas, you can see it's real dark, so some of the lighter areas, I'll go a little bit heavier with the orange. Okay, here's a, a pretty common technique that you can do, and that is where I'm going to paint this entire slat brown, and then I will let it dry, and I'm going to cover it with a, uh, a coat of orange, and then let that dry, and then I'll hit it with a sander, and what that will do is sand away a lot of the orange on top, and then expose the brown on the bottom, just to give it kind of a a very unique look. So this one I'm going to do a similar technique to the brown. I'm going to paint it a white and then paint an orange over the top of it. But I'm actually not going to sand the, uh, the orange out of it. So what I'm going to do in, instead is just throw a coat of white on and then I'm just going to barely brush uh, orange over the top of it. This is just another uh, color orange. So this board has a very dark brown underneath it and then I painted a, a solid orange on top of it. And now I'm just gonna kind of sand the edges a little bit just You can even just kind of hit right down the middle a little bit too. You don't want to do too much because you start to actually finish the board and it kind of gets it pretty clean underneath. So just about like this. This one I did a white and then just kind of lightly brush an orange on top of it. And I'm just going to knock it down just a little bit. See, it starts to hit the high spots only. Okay, so this one I really stand it on quite a bit. You can see the idea was to have the orange kind of fade out and expose the brown paint underneath it. 
Um, but you can see a couple of these real high spots. I went all the way down to bare wood um, just a little bit, but then I got an idea to put that the wax on it. So I went ahead and took it all the way down even further and exposed a whole bunch more of that bare wood. And now I'm going to show you, I'm going to come back with this uh, dark soft wax. So there's this piece. Now that I've put some of this wax into the uh, equation, I'm, I'm going to put some wax on a few more boards just so it kind of marries them up a little bit better. You can see that I'll go real heavy maybe on the edges and then a little bit in the middle right here, but then coming down to this side, I won't touch the middle, just hit the edges. That's probably all I'm going to do on that one, just a very light coat. actually the bottom of the pumpkin so I think I'm just going to hit the very bottom of this one and then kind of lightly graze the top of it and then come back to a clean like it down a little bit. so this board was kind of the half and half you can see where the stock of the pumpkin starts on this board and so I just did a the same thing just a very light brush of orange across and then came in with the dark for the the stem on it but I don't think I'm actually going to do anything to this one. I think I'm just going to leave that one alone. And what I'm doing here is applying that soft wax to the entire frame. That way all the pieces are just married up a little bit better. It gives it a very clean look, but still pretty distressed and rugged. Okay, this is going to be our final step just going to be to glue the frame to the slats. I'm just making sure everything fits snug. This is why I said keep every piece. That little uh, quarter inch strip I held on to there is the difference between a, a big sloppy space or being flush. So make sure you hang on to every little piece. And I'm just giving it um, one more layout just to make sure that I don't want to trim any boards up or uh, do any sanding or anything before I glue it down. So. So as you can see, I actually just use wood glue to attach my frame to the pallet slats, but you can always use a, uh, a brad nail gun or even just some small wood screws. But just be careful though, because pallet wood's pretty brittle and it'll split on you. So best bet would be to um, just use wood glue. But if you do brad nails, make sure you back it up with some wood glue underneath and use a clamp for every slat. That way you make sure you get the best hold. Well, there's the finished product, our pallet wood pumpkin. So these pumpkins are made out of the leftovers whenever you cut out the frame. I actually think I like these better. I painted these with the same technique and put them on these stands. This fall I'm going to put all three of them out in our front entryway. Anyway, let me know what you think of the video. Hit like if you liked it and subscribe because I'm going to have a a whole lot more uh, fall and Halloween videos coming up soon. And if there's something particular you're looking for, shoot me a message. I'll see if I can build it and make a video. Thanks for watching.